Before pronouncing the sentence, Judge Edward Cowart let Bundy make a statement. And I'm not asking for mercy. For I find it somewhat absurd to ask for mercy for something I did not do. So I will be tortured for and will suffer for and receive the pain for that act. But I will not share the burden for the guilt. In imposing sentence, Judge Cowart cited the savagery of the crimes and what he called the indifference of the defendant. This court, independent of, but in agreement with, the advisory sentence rendered by the jury does hereby impose the death penalty upon the defendant, Theodore Robert Bundy. Then, in an unexpected move, perhaps an afterthought, Cowart stunned the courtroom with some parting words for Bundy. Take care of yourself, young man. Thank you. All right, I'll say that to you sincerely. Take care of yourself. It's a tragedy for this court to see it's such a total waste, I think, of humanity that I've experienced in this court. You're a bright young man. You made a good lawyer. I'd love to have you practice in front of me, but you went another way, partner. Bundy says he'll appeal. Meanwhile, he has been ordered to the state prison to await setting of the date of his execution in the electric chair. Ted, it is uh, about 2.30 in the afternoon. Uh, you are scheduled to be executed tomorrow morning at 7 o'clock if you don't receive another stay. What is going through your mind? What thoughts have you had in these last few days? Well, I won't kid you to say that it's something that I feel that I am in control of or something that I've come to terms with, because I haven't. It's a moment by moment thing. Sometimes I feel very tranquil and other times uh, I don't feel tranquil at all. Put the lights out on Ted Bunny. Well, if you have any opinion on that or you'd like to call me on the power lines, you can do so now. Even local radio stations are jumping on the Bundy bandwagon, asking their callers for their opinions and rolling with excitement for a pending execution. Normally it's kind of out of character for the Big Ape to uh, do something that could be considered in poor taste, but uh, we're just reflecting what the listeners are telling us on the phones. Johnson says 99% of the callers are in support of frying Bundy tomorrow. One excited listener even brought this homemade Bundy doll in just for the occasion. Tomorrow, WAPE plans to ask listeners to conserve power so there'll be enough energy to turn the switch. In Tallahassee, another radio station is playing a new hit, a song of Bundy's life to the tune Bye Bye Miss America Pie. So bye bye Ted Bundy, bye bye. Nile, if you will, shortly after midnight, and according to prison officials, he was vis visibly shaken and somewhat subdued. He spent from 1 to 5 this morning with a minister praying in his cell. He has refused this, the traditional breakfast of steak and eggs this morning. Now, last night, his next-to-last visitor was Dr. James Dobson from California. Dr. Dobson conducted what is believed to be the last interview with Ted Bundy. He said, I accept the full responsibility for it. Her says she can't believe he murdered dozens of women. Louise Bundy didn't want to show her face, but she did agree to talk about her son. If he killed all those lovely young women. We have several beautiful daughters of our own. We know how he, we would feel. And it's a terrible thing. And he wasn't raised that way. He was raised in a good, loving, caring family. Dang it. You know, we still love and care for him, but we want to know what caused this. Of course, a lot of folks have been trying to figure out the same thing. But whatever caused it, the final chapter in Ted Bundy's life may end in the Florida electric chair at 7 o'clock this morning. We will be there live, and of course, we will keep you updated. Yesterday, Dr. James Dobbins, a California radio broadcaster, taped an hour-long interview with Ted Bundy. I did not ask him how many murders that he had committed, but I did say uh, in the beginning, for the record, uh, do you admit that you have killed many women and children and he said 
yes, I admit that, I am a murderer, or something to that effect. That's not a direct quote, but we began at that point. Barring any last-minute stay, uh, which there appears to be none, uh, just minutes uh, before the scheduled execution, Ted Bundy will go to the Florida State electric chair at 7 o'clock, becoming the 20th person uh, since the uh, death penalty was reinstated in Florida a decade ago to go to the electric chair. Nancy? Good morning, Charlie. It appears that Ted Bundy only has a few more moments to live. At this time, it is believed there are no more appeals pending, and he has been just strapped into the electric chair. According to the schedule that we think is going to be operating on this morning, Bundy will be given the opportunity to make a last statement, which should be occurring about two minutes after the hour, about now. It is expected that statement could go from five to seven minutes. Nancy, we just received the signal from just outside the chamber where the Florida electric chair has uh, electrocuted and put to death uh, accused serial killer Ted Bundy, a 42-year-old law school dropout uh, after spending 10 years on Florida's death row. Bundy confessing in the past week or so to as many as 20 murders of young women in the western states, uh, at one time considered a suspect in as many as 36 deaths or disappearances. Relatives of victims have said they felt relief after Bundy's confessions. Uh, now, after his execution, one can speculate uh, that relief is even greater. Apparently, any attempt by Bundy or his attorneys uh, to plead incompetence as a last-ditch effort uh, to stay the execution uh, never materialized. Once again, uh, we have been notified that uh, accused serial killer Ted Bundy uh, has been executed in the Florida electric chair. Nancy? Stay, please. Please. All right, here you go. At 7.16 this morning, Bundy was indeed executed. The hearse with his remains passed by the street, and protesters out here let out a big cheer. Prison officials say witnesses have told them that uh, Bundy's last words to his lawyer were, please tell my family that I'm sorry. Witnesses have come out and have given a signal that indeed he has been executed. That happened again at 7.16 this morning. John Quinones outside the state penitentiary, Stark, Florida. It didn't, it didn't affect me really one way or the other. I suppose it was somebody, a lesser notoriety, would you think that would have... I don't know. I think probably the reason that I felt that way was because it was such a sterile environment where it was carried out. It was, uh, it was very humane, was in my very opinion. Clinical, very, very clinical, yes. Very clinical, yeah. And I think that probably had a lot to do with how, you know, you're affected by that. There was nothing gruesome about it whatsoever. Uh, even, even to the point when they raised the veil over his eyes, the hood, uh, to uh, check his pupils, uh, didn't bother me. Did he go in under his own power? Was he carried in or what? He needed assistance. Yeah, he needed assistance. But he regained that composure once he was placed in the chair and they strapped him in, he began to regain his composure. Matter of fact, his, his uh, coloration was not good when he was first brought to the room. But once he sat down, uh, all his color came back and everything else.
I guess it's just that walk. You know, it's just such an urgency to the situation. Yeah. Yeah. very cognizant so I wouldn't think he would have been given anything that was very strong he even recognized people across the glass from him and who know who they were people that had worked on the case you know for all this time uh, people in the state attorney's office and this type of thing and uh, he spoke to them uh, which was surprising as well he acknowledged their presence and said hello someone even said that at one point he smiled at both Coleman and at, uh, at the state's attorney yeah he did smile it, it, it was a token smile it wasn't uh, you know no 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 I it was just like, a, like a, I see you and I see you I know who you are and yeah. and probably that we're we're all getting this behind us yeah yeah it's over I would imagine from the look on his face if I had to probably put a tag as to how he felt it was let's get it on let's do it let's get it over The only words that he did say, uh, say at all was the fact that give my love to my family and to my friends, which I found somewhat odd. Uh, and the only thing I guess that went through my mind was there were so many family members and friends that would never receive love due to the numbers of people that he did kill. Uh, what's going through my mind right now is to use the minutes and hours that I have left as fruitfully as possible and see what happens. Uh, it helps to to live in the moment in the in the essence that we use it productively so i'm right now i'm feeling calm and in, in large part because i'm here with you for the record you are guilty of killing many women and girls Is yes that yes that's true well again this please understand that, that even all these years later, it's very difficult to, to talk to about talk. it, and, to, and, and reliving it through talking about it uh, is, is uh, difficult to say the least, but I want you to understand what happened. It was like coming out of some kind of horrible trance or, or dream. Um, I can only liken it to after, you know, I, I don't want to over-dramatize it, but to have been possessed by something so awful and so alien and then the next morning wake up from it remember what happened and realize that basically I mean in, in the eyes of the law certainly in the eyes of God you're responsible uh, to have to wake up in the morning and and realize what I had done and with a clear mind and all my essential moral and ethical feelings intact at that moment uh, uh, absolutely horrified that I was capable of doing something like that. And as you would imagine, there is tremendous cynicism about you on the outside, and I suppose for good reason. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not sure that there's anything that you could say that people would uh, would believe. Some people would believe. Yeah. And uh, and yet, you told me last night, and I have heard this through our mutual friend John Tanner that you have uh, accepted the forgiveness of Jesus Christ and uh, are a follower and a believer in Him. Do you draw strength from that uh, as you approach these final hours? I do. I can't say that uh, it's going to be being easy. in the, the, the valley of the shadow of death is, is something that I've become all that accustomed to and that, I, you know, and that I'm strong and uh, uh, nothing's bothering me. Uh, Listen, it's no fun. It's mm -hmm. it's it, you know it's it's uh, it's gets kind of lonely, and yet I have to remind myself that every one of us uh, will go through this someday yes. in one way or another. It's and, under man. and countless uh, millions who have walked this earth before us have. So this is just an experience which we all share. And yeah, right on.